welcome back. So, Rudyard, he finally did it. He finally had a change of heart. Premier Jean Charest of Quebec seems to say that he wants to have a public inquiry mm -hmm. after all. Question is, could he not have this inquiry? That's uh, pressure building within his own caucus, the Quebec media whipping up, you know, it's a been over a year. Here. I know, but it's been it's been constant pressure over a year, and it it he seems he's finally cracked. And uh, I I didn't think it would happen. Did you? Well, the question is, is this his gomery? I mean, is uh -huh. he looking at a type of scandal on a scale that could potentially bring his already low polling numbers? down to even further lows as, as he faces an election next year? Th those are the big questions. Well, let's get some answers to those questions Absolutely. now. We've got two great guests standing by in Montreal. Antonia Maioni is a political science professor at McGill University. Welcome to the show. And Beryl Wiseman is president of the Institute for Public Affairs and editor of Suburban. Welcome, both of you. Hi, Tasha. Hi, Roger. <laughs> so, uh, Antonia, let me start with you. What prompted this apparent change of heart on the part of the Premier? Well, we haven't had the official official <laughs> announcement yet. <laughs> That's true. But uh, Jean Charest went into his went into exactly he went into his caucus meeting uh, early this morning. Apparently, this is what was discussed and debated, uh, and it looks like he will be announcing uh, the holding of this uh, public inquiry into the construction industry uh, as early as tomorrow. Um, it's been if it's a change of heart, it's been a very long time coming. Uh, it's been over two years that uh, the opposition has been hammering him, uh, the media. He's had it really uh, constant pressure to do something. Uh, about the allegations of collusion and corruption in the construction industry and we've had even reports now, the Duchesneau report, that has suggested that an inquiry is, is absolutely needed to clear the air. So I think his change of heart has been a long time coming. It may have come on the heels of what Roger alluded to, which is the continual sinking in the polls. A new poll out this morning in Le Devoir again uh, suggested that it, they even have, the Liberal Party is so far low in the polls and they haven't even hit rock bottom. So if he has any hope in turning things around for 2012 and the next provincial election, this is really the only way to go. Let's bring up actually some of those uh, poll numbers, uh, Antonia, and let's have you, Beryl, uh, comment on them. What we're seeing here is not only simply uh, low support for uh, the Liberals, but, you know, let's face it, not a significant challenge at this point from the Parti Québécois. I think what everyone's wondering about is this new political party, uh, Legault's party, and whether it's got legs to make this scandal and this inquiry into something uh, that could vault them into uh, political office come next year. But you see, Roger, that's the danger uh, of things like inquiries, and that's the danger, frankly, of political leaders simply pandering to polls. Uh, Bernard Landry was once asked years ago at the time of the Oxygen Neuf uh, affair, why don't you hold a public inquiry? He says, because public inquiries turn into public inquisitions. Uh, these are reactions to this politics of demonization that we have in Quebec and elsewhere in Canada, uh, politics by headline. In all these allegations, we've had no charges, even in Duchesneau's operation, and by the way, the problems within Duchesneau's operation and Operation Marteau has less to do with political interference and with the management of Operation Marteau. So uh, if you're going to do away with due process, and if you're going to have a lot of innocent people's reputations slimed in this process, they really ought to think twice. The Premier really ought to get out and talk to the people and make his case because he's an intelligent man, he's a decent man, and he's quite passionate when he starts to talk. Yeah, but Beryl, I think people Beryl, are af with all, yeah. all due respect, there's been so, so many people calling for inquiry, and not simply on the basis of, you know, politics, we know that, but when you have mayors, for example, who went on Radio Canada, one of the mayors of, uh, I think it was Rivière des Prairies, an area north of Montreal, saying that her hands are tied, she has to give contracts to known construction companies with known ties to the mob simply based on the procurement policies, going public with this kind of thing. I mean, don't you think that Mr. Charest really has no choice here to have an inquiry? Tasha, that was one town in one election. Let me give you two examples. One major newspaper, French, one major newspaper, English in Montreal. Big headline um, in, the, in one of the French papers. Shocking ties of, I won't name the, the construction uh, leader. Shocking ties of this man. You read the article, what are the shocking ties that FTQ Construction made 12% uh, profits in investing in his contracts, in his projects, they only made 5% on the rest of theirs. Uh, where's a shocking tie? When I called that newspaper, they said, we didn't make the headline, we're sorry, it's wrong. English newspaper, only 14 companies got construction contracts from Montreal out of 700. Well, what the reporter forgot to mention was the 14 were general contractors, of which there were only 22 who had the bonding capacity the city of Montreal wanted. 
that was what failed to be mentioned. The, the, there's a lot of okay, Beryl. I want to I bring Antonio no back into the conversation here. And uh, Antonio, is is Beryl on to something here? You know, is this kind of smear by media uh, being hung in the court of public opinion? And uh, once this inquiry gets underway, maybe the results aren't as bad as the we were presuming right now. Well, look, Beryl's got a point. There will be an incredible mediaization of this process. Uh, it's going to get ugly before it gets better, right? That's for sure. But on the other hand, in terms of due process, I think there is a responsibility now and an obligation to the public, since this has been an ongoing kind of talking, an ongoing type, kind of black cloud over not only the construction industry, but the Liberal Party as a whole for more than two years. So in order to clear the air, I don't see any other a reasonable way of getting out of it than having a public inquiry. And remember that there's a way, that there has been suggestions of a way of making it less mediatized and less of a circus by having parts of the inquiry uh, entre huis clos, that is to say, in, uh, behind closed doors. This was used with the Moisin uh, uh, Commission in, in 2007 on the, some of the allegations coming from Gomery and on the, uh, some of the uh, allegations coming out of Option Canada during the 1995 referendum. So there is a way out to try to reduce the media sensation. But believe it or not, if we don't have a public inquiry, the mediatization is just going to get worse and it's going to be potentially fatal for Jean Charest in 2012. Well, if Jean Charest doesn't... Uh, go ahead, Beryl. Sorry, sorry, Tasha. If Jean Charest doesn't intervene and go to the public, which he has failed to do, and it, it, it's, it's sad that political leaders don't trust their own instincts. Look, due process has nothing to do with what the public wants. Due process has to do with those principles of law that have kept us going for a thousand years, the presumption of innocence. Mm -hmm. uh, all that goes out the window in an inquiry. Uh, whether it's we close or not, things leak. Uh, the headlines are there. And the police don't get to do their jobs. Okay, Beryl, we're going to have to leave it there. Great debate, guys. Get to my other political questions next time we have you on. Beryl Wiseman, Antonia Maioni, thanks so much for joining us from Montreal today. Thank Bye -bye you. Bye-bye now.